A little while ago, I put up a poll in where I asked you if you were using any input devices with your tablets and or smartphones. And I was actually surprised to see that 29% of you actually do that. For some reason, I thought it would be less. Well, up till a few months ago, I was part of the 63% here that only uses fingers to interact with tablets and or smartphones. And so for a few months, I've actually been an Apple Pencil user. And here's my take on it. I have always hated writing with a pencil. I remember going through my school years absolutely hating writing that way. And the only time I still do it is when someone asks me to sign for something. And I remember when I got to try a computer for the first time. The first time it was a VIC-20 and using a keyboard was amazing. And ever since then, I've loved using a keyboard. And even with that said, I have also struggled against connecting a keyboard to my iPad. Because for me, the iPad and iPhone, they are touch devices that you interact with directly with your fingers. You don't have to have anything in between that translate your hand movements. I've always loved that fact with these touch interfaces. And don't even get me started on using a mouse. I did that for so many years, so much, that I ended up with pain shooting through my hand, through my arm, all the way up through my shoulder, through my neck, and into my head. And it took years to get rid of. So you can understand that I've struggled against getting anything that is supposed to translate my hand movements into the iPad and or iPhone. But still, I'm here with two Apple pencils. So what happened? Well, FabFilter happened. I love FabFilter plugins because they are some of the most powerful plugins on the App Store. And when it comes to Saturn, Volcano, and Timeless 3, they're impressively powerful because there's so much you can do thanks to the fact that you can set up so much modulation for almost anything inside the plugins. You can build your own little plugins within the plugin. I love it. It's like a modular system. But they have clearly been ported over from desktop and laptop systems over to iOS without really considering the touch aspect. When you're trying to set up modulation and tweak stuff, well, your fingers cover everything you need to see. And so it's easy to miss parameters. And some parameters are almost impossible to reach with a finger, even if you're using an eye device with a big screen. So I needed a way to improve my control of these apps. And since I don't want to use a mouse, it had to be the Apple Pencil. And before we have a look at these Apple Pencils and why I prefer one over the other, I just want to highlight that when I started working with Timeless 3 and the other FabFilter plugins, this was actually not the first time I felt like I needed something to improve my control over the apps or any apps. You see, the first time that actually happened was several years before, back when Sugarbytes put Cyclops on iOS. Cyclops is this amazing bass synthesizer. And if you're a bass head like me, you should get it. However, Cyclops has the same problem as the Fab filter plugins. Cyclops was made for desktop and laptop computer systems. And so you're supposed to use a mouse with them. So some of the controls are really, really tiny and it's a clear port. They just taken the thing and ported it over and tried to fit that thing to the screen size. So the whole touch aspect has not really been considered here. Now, I could have just gotten one of them, the latest Apple Pencil, because the iPad that I use the most is the iPad Pro 11-inch from 2018. It is compatible with the new 
Apple Pencil. The one that attaches right onto the iPad body with magnets and then it charges wirelessly. And this is a really, really good design because it always keeps my pen charged when I need it and it's always right there whenever I need it. Not only that, this is also how you pair the pencil with your iPad. You just plop it on there and it's paired. And it's not the only thing I like. I like that there's not much on it that can just fall off and disappear, unlike the original Apple Pencil. Now, I got this one because I do have an older iPad that I sometimes use. And since the screen is bigger, it's a 12.9 inch, it's the first generation iPad Pro. Well, the bigger screen just allows me to have a bigger surface area to work with whenever I'm doing something graphical. Well, it turns out that the original iPad Pro is only compatible with the older Apple Pencil. And this one has a really stupid design. First of all, it has this cap that can fall off and disappear. And it just makes the pen look really silly when you don't have the cap on it. So I don't like that one bit. Secondly, when you want to charge the pencil, you have to remove the cap. And then if you want to charge it with an adapter, you have to get this little thing, which is really small and very easy to lose. And it does cost you money to get a new one. And if you lose it, you end up with the most cursed charging system in the world. And it just feels wrong sticking this very long pen into the lightning port, hoping that I'm not gonna bend it or something every time and break it or the port. But it doesn't end there because here's the stinker. You're gonna keep having to do this because this is how you pair your Apple Pencil with your iPad. It is bad design and I hate it. Now I have tried writing with both pencils and I've tried some painting and other things that I don't really do that well, but I'm impressed by how super accurate these pencils are. However, I cannot with a good conscience recommend the first generation pencil because of all the previously mentioned things that I think are just bad design. So only get that one if you're stuck with an older iPad or a newer iPad that only supports the first generation pencil. However, I can, with a good conscience, recommend the second generation pencil because it's just got an overall better design. This one, they did a real good job on. So the next topic would of course be, how much use have I gotten out of my Apple Pencil? All right, so the most obvious user case so far has been when I'm working with FabFilter plugins. And in those cases, I've gotten a ton of use out of my pencil. What about other user cases though? Well, I've tried using the pencil to control other synthesizers and I just don't like it. I really do enjoy using my fingers when controlling stuff on my touch screen, funnily enough. It's a nice workflow and it feels much more organic for me, more fluid for me to work with my fingers directly on the screen. And I work much faster that way. So in most cases, when using any synthesizer, any effect app, I haven't really gotten much use out of the pencil, not even when working inside DOS like Cubasis. But how about apps where it makes more sense to actually use a pencil, like designing apps? Well, I do use Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, and I mostly use Affinity Designer to do all of my still graphics, all of my backgrounds, all of my titling, some other graphics for my videos, my thumbnails. I do it all in Affinity Designer. And in those cases, it's really nice to have a pen, especially when you're drawing stuff, right? Well, it is nice until you start working with text because in those cases, as soon as you bring up a text layer of some sort, then the keyboard you get has been optimized for the pencil. And I hate that keyboard because I don't like typing with a pencil. It makes no sense to me. So what's happened is I've permanently docked the pencil not to have this happen to me. And I've kept working with my fingers, only bringing out the pencil when I need to do fine adjustments of curves and stuff. But yeah, I haven't really gotten much use out of my pencil and I could just do without the pencil whenever I use Affinity Designer. Now there are a few more apps where I can see how the pencil would be a really good tool and that's when you're working with modular apps that uses virtual cablings and basically has you wiring virtual cables up to tiny holes. So if you're using Model 15 or MyRack or any similar type of app, I can see uses for the pencil, but I haven't done that. I'm only using my pencil with three apps. 
from FabFilter. But I do it so much that I still feel like I've gotten my money's worth, more than my money's worth, especially since I bought the thing used on an auction site. So in the end, do I recommend the Apple Pencil for mobile music production? Well, let me put it like this. If you do stuff the way I do it, work with a lot of FabFilter plugins, or if you're doing a lot of modular patches, and you feel like you need more control over what you're doing, and you're tired of covering up things on screen that you need to see while you're building patches or things like that. In cases like that, getting a tool to improve your control makes sense. And if that is the case, then you have two choices. And one of them is expensive. It's the Apple Pencil, even if you buy it used. The other option you have is getting a mouse. There's an abundance of computer mice out there and you can easily get something ergonomical that doesn't give you carpal tunnel syndrome. And they're so cheap or way less expensive at least. So I would recommend that over the pencil if you're not doing drawing or sketching or designing or anything like that. Now, if you are doing drawing and sketching and designing, then getting an Apple Pencil makes a lot of sense for you. These are really accurate tools and they're lovely to work with. Both Apple Pencils are lovely to work with when you're actually using them. Yes, even though I do hate using pencils. However, I do not recommend the first generation pencil because I think it has a stupid design. I really don't like that fact. Now, the second generation pencil has a good design. And that's the last thing I'm gonna say about all this. If you like the work I do here on the channel, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't wanna give me a thumbs up, do it anyway, just because I'm saying that you should. Uh, if you wanna support me financially, then check out my new preset packs, one for Trooper Synthesizer and the other one for Timeless 3. And you can get these over at Gumroad. There are links down below. But if you choose to become a patron instead, then you don't get charged extra for these two preset packs. And let me add that the 32 presets I built for the preset pack for Timeless 3 here, well, I did them all with the Apple Pencil. Isn't that neat? Now, if you don't wanna support me like that, then you can always check out my Patreon and PayPal, of course. And if you don't wanna do that, you can check out my music, full list of links down below. And if you don't wanna do any of it, that's fine too. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.